The Legendary Summoning event for December 2019 starts in a couple days and it's going to be our last major banner of the year. This special monthly banner features a starting 8% firestar focus rate and the non-focus rate is set to 0% at all times. This means any 5 star unit you get from this banner is guaranteed to be one of these 12 units, no other pity breakers. It's a great time if you want any new 5 star characters but be aware that trying to get one specific unit will be tougher. This monthly banner does last for an extended period of time, probably because of the holidays. It lasts until the first week of January and if you want to wait, we will find out about the new New Year's units and maybe the next new heroes banner, although I don't think we'll get that lucky. In this video, we'll cover each of the 12 heroes on this banner and we'll talk about their skills in case you end up with some unwanted copies. First, we have our new legendary hero and it's Celica. She is dressed up in her overclass design to match legendary arm. Celica is a green infantry mage and is a fire legendary hero with pair up. She will be our first green pair up unit, so for most like allegiance battles, this may be something useful for you. For her old skills, Celica has Miracle as her special, that is going to be a pain on her legendary hero map. Her A skill is Swift Sparrow 3, which grants an absurd plus 6 attack and plus 7 speed when initiating. Very premier A skill and definitely signals that this Celica is probably going to be pretty fast herself. Her weapon is the Saintly Seraphim, a 14 might tome that grants a flat plus 3 speed. If Celica initiates combat, she will deal damage equal to 25% of the foe's res stat. Oh boy, so Saintly Seraphim is exactly like Legendary Alms Luna Arc Bow. It cuts through 25% of the enemy's res stat and it's basically like having a Moon Bow proc every hit. If Celica were to attack twice, that is a lot of extra damage and she's probably going to have solid attack to start with. So for those unfamiliar, Legendary Alm is definitely one of the strongest archers in the game thanks to his bow. Being able to cut through a tank's defense stats makes him very annoying to deal with and even if he doesn't get the kill, he can take a chunk of health. Legendary Celica might be able to do the same, but she is a green mage so at the very least, you can try to tank her with a red unit. You can't do the same for Alm unless you have a Raven Tome. Regardless, Saintly Seraphim is doing magic damage so Celica is going to be a tough unit to bait in. Celica's unique B skill is Soul of Zofia. This skill is literally no follow up combined with Desperation, similar to the new Daring Fighter armor skill but more complete. Legendary Alm has no follow up in his kit so he's really tough to stop unless you can match his speed and it looks like Legendary Celica is going to follow a similar trend. Having Desperation on hand is so good for her and combined with no follow up it means if Celica outspeeds her opponent she will guarantee Desperation gets its 2 hits off. Only odd thing is that with her base kit, Celica doesn't have a reliable way to get into Desperation range. No follow up can help if she can't kill a tanky quick repose unit but I'm not expecting Celica to have amazing defense so she might just get one shot. While Swift Sparrow 3 is amazing, good old Fury might be a safer option. Another good skill is Sturdy Impact, especially if you want to use her on a defense team since that extra plus 10 defense really helps out a lot. Anyway, you want to build her, Soul of Zofia will make Celica an extremely deadly desperation mage. Brazen Tag and Speed would be an obvious choice to go with it, or something like Flashing Blade plus Moonbow would also work well. Two hits plus the mini Moonbow effect on Saintly Seraphim is something you don't want to tank. For C skill, Celica introduces Attack and Speed 03. At the start of the turn, if unit is adjacent to an ally, grants plus 5 Attack and Speed for one turn. This self buffing ability is very easy to activate, and this Attack and Speed variant is just amazing for your high speed offensive units. It's a pretty solid option for a Blatum user as well, since you just then need to bring a defense and res buff to start nuking foes. For Legendary Celica, obviously more attack and speed will not be hurting her, and her entire kit is just very offense oriented. Overall, Legendary Celica looks pretty great. Her weapon is definitely a little worrisome because we've seen what Legendary Arm can do, and I'm pretty confident Celica will have high attack and speed to match him. So Sophia is pretty simple and Celica's game plan is generally the same as any other Desperation user. She's probably going to have lower defense so trying to patch that up will be helpful and getting her into Desperation range is your main goal. If she does have to take a hit then no follow up from Soul Sophia can keep her alive if the enemy has a guaranteed follow up attack but they can't outspeed Celica. Other than that she doesn't have any defensive measures so that's going to be her main weakness. As with Legendary Alm if you need to tank Celica best bet is to one shot her on the first counterattack. Thankfully a strong red unit is much easier to have on hand versus having a raven tome just for Alm. For the most part Legendary Celica is pretty simple, high offensive power on a desperation mage isn't unheard of but the true damage when initiating is potent and after seeing Alm shred through tanks I would not underestimate Celica. 
Now let's talk about the 11 other units on this banner. For red, we got Legendary Ike, Legendary Roy, and Harid. For blue, we have Peony, who is still on the book for banner if you want to get her there. Joining her is Mythic Naga and Dimitri. For green, we have a godly group of Legendary Celica, Mythic Thrasir, and Edelgard. Last, Colorless has Legendary Female Grima, Air, and then Claude. Some interesting things about this lineup, we have three free units you can get from the story, Legendary Ike, Peony, and Air. There are no seasonal units, and if you look at it, there were only three open spots anyway, so it's possible the Double Special Heroes banner will be more common in the future. We also have the three house leaders from three houses, and with Winter Sothis, I suspect this is to cash in on people getting the game during Christmas. I also kind of hope, but I feel like more three houses characters are coming, so if you're hoping to nab more students, it's definitely a tough time to decide whether to spend more orbs. Our red group starts with Legendary Ike. Everyone can get him for free, so no pressure to summon for him, but I've seen some beastly merged up Ikes. He's a more defensive swordsman with a distant counter sword, and with Warding Breath, he can charge up Radiant Aether insanely fast. He's a great unit for PvE content, but in terms of skill fodder, Warding Breath is his main draw. Second is Legendary Roy, who is a bit more speedier than Ike, very balanced set of stats, and Roy's Dragon Bind is effective against dragons, and has distant counter making him a great all-around unit. Human Virtue is a great C skill, and Roy can buff up any non-beast or dragon allies with a nice plus 6 attack and speed, he can also self-buff himself. Combine that with Bonus Doubler, which effectively doubles all field buffs, and Roy is a very fun unit. He is also a pair up Legendary, and that's great for Allegiance battles. Bonus Doubler will be his best skill fodder. Last is Harid, who is a Sword Cavalier and a really neat unit. He has high attack with low speed, but also good defense and res, and this is great because he comes with distant counter. His sword grants follow-up attacks if the enemy has a debuff on them, and it also prevents the foe's follow-ups, which makes Harid very strong when it activates. Luckily, he has Freezing Seal, which is similar to a chill skill. It inflicts a nasty minus 6 attack and speed debuff on the foe with the lowest res stat. With Attack Smoke, Herod can also spread more debuffs for him to utilize, so all around he can be extremely powerful as a Sword Cav. Obviously, Distant Counter will be his best fodder skill, but since there's only one skill, you can also pass along Attack Smoke as well. Overall, Red is decent, nothing super busted, just 3 solid units, and they all have Distant Counter abilities. Not a large number of skills available, but the ones available are all pretty strong A skills and are all good to have. For the blue group, we have Peony back again. She is the new free book 4 unit, so again, no pressure to summon for her. She is a flying blue mage dancer, and after getting to use her, I really like what she offers. Flower of Joy is just a long range attack and speed buff, but combine that with Gentle Dream, and Peony can offer some good stat boost for her team. Gentle Dream is her dance move, but it has a large AoE plus 3 to all stats field buff that also comes with a warping status. Definitely worth using, even if you have Legendary Azura. For her skills, Peony has some good fodder on hand, be dual flying if you care about arena score, aerobatics is fun on mixed teams, and fortified res grants that huge plus 7 res field buff. If you do care about arena scoring, or rather scoring for the new Mjolnir Strike game mode, then getting more Peonies does matter. Mythic score very well with merges in that mode, and they get bonus points during their season, so yes, the mode will be dominated by whales. Unsurprising, but that's how it is. Continuing on, we have Mythic Naga, another mythic hero, she is an astro hero, and is a flying blue dragon. Naga has some balanced stats, and her main feature is to create a whole team of dragon killers. Her divine fang skill grants a buff to allies that give them dragon effectiveness, and her divine breath weapon grants Naga herself stat boost based on the number of dragon killers around her. She has an aether raids often skill, but personally I don't think those skills are that great. In terms of fodder, that just leaves her with chill speed, which isn't bad. Last, we have the Boar Prince, Dimitri. He is a Lance Cavalier, but I predict we'll see legendary versions of the House Leaders by next year, and I cannot wait for them. Dimitri has a ton of attack with OK defense and really poor res. His Noble Lance grants him a follow-up attack, but only if the enemy's health status matches his own. If both Dimitri and the enemy are at full health, then he gets a follow-up attack. Also, if both Dimitri and his target are below 100% HP, then he gets the follow-up, but you cannot have one at full health and one being hurt. Combine this with Deathblow 4 for a massive plus 8 attack on initiations, and with low attack and defense which gets rid of enemy at field buffs, plus lowers their attack and defense a little, and you have one scary attacker. Dimitri is very powerful if he makes the first move, and he has two amazing skills on offer. Now for green, we have a really good group if you want to try and get Celica. We talked about her already, but if you're looking for skill fodder, then Swiss Bro 3 is amazing. Funny enough, that's a really good skill for Legendary Alm instead of his Darting Blow 4. Celica also has attack and speed oath, and while it's a selfish skill, having those easy attack and speed buffs is going to make any offensive unit pretty happy. 
If you want a green mage but don't get Celica, Thrasir is another amazing option. She is an anima mythic hero as well. As a unit, Thrasir is extremely fast and her tome is effective against dragons as well. If she has an ally within 3 spaces, she gets plus 4 to all stats and she neutralizes skills that grant the enemy a follow up attack. This makes her an annoying attacker but it gets worse with killing intent. This is a pretty devastating B skill since if Thrasir fights an enemy with a penalty on them or a damaged enemy, she inflicts minus 5 speed and res on them. Also if she initiates combat then she makes a follow up attack before the enemy can counter. My goodness, this is like desperation, but if you can set it up correctly, Drasir can double tap enemies while at full health, and she gets more damage as well. Very nice consolation prize if you can't get Celica, but want a powerful green mage. Drasir also has Flashing Blade 4 and Panic Smoke, both which are very rare skills at the moment. Last up we have Edelgard who is an Axe Infantry unit. This little lady has the highest attack for all Axe Infantry units and an incredible 37 defense as well. Wet attack and defense solo granting plus 6 attack and defense when alone and Rouse attack and defense granting a plus 6 attack and defense field buff. Edelgard is one tough unit. All of this combos very well with the Victorious Axe which accelerates special trigger and if Edelgard is surrounded by more enemies than allies within 2 spaces then she gets a follow up attack. This is an incredibly good weapon for Gale Force builds since Edelgard can just 2 hit any enemy to ensure Gale Force procs. Overall green is outstanding not only can you get 2 high damage fast mages but a very powerful axe unit as well. You also have an insane amount of rare skills available. All of those A skills and C skills are fantastic and you really can't go wrong with getting anyone here. Definitely not a bad time if you really want to get Legendary Celica. Last for colorless we have Legendary Female Grima back again. She is a colorless flying dragon, still one of a kind. Her stats are spread out all around and expiration is a distant counter breath. This pairs well with Dragon Skin which protects Grima from arrows and grants some defense res when defending. An Altina plus Grima team would make any archer very sad. Having a distant counter flyer that doesn't get wrecked by archers is pretty handy, but female Grima isn't bringing much besides that. She does have res smoke however, which would be useful in an all dragon team, but it's minus 7 res AoE debuff. Next we have Air, she is our book 3 free unit and is a flying dagger unit. Pretty unique typing and she isn't a bad attacker since she has swift sparrow and her unique dagger also adds extra attack and speed. Air is excellent for Aether Raids and some scoring teams use 2 airs for her extra res buffs and she also has Sparkling Boost which heals the most damaged ally with plus 10 HP a turn. She is still the only unit with Mystic Boost which is an odd skill but it grants plus 6 HP after a fight and it disables adaptive damage which can be great for ranged units fighting dragons. Last up we have Claude of the Golden Deer, he is a colorless cavalry archer and I think he definitely gives Brave Lane a run for her money. Claude has an impressive 33 attack and 37 speed stat line and can dish out a lot of damage thanks to the sneaky use of in combat debuffs. His cunning bow activates if Claude has a total of 10 or more total field buffs on himself or total penalties on the enemy. This bow then inflicts minus 5 tall stats on the enemy during combat. This is extremely easy to activate if you go the buffing route, one home cavalry buff will suffice. Cunning Bow works so well with low speed and defense which inflicts another minus 3 speed and defense on the enemy and then also gets rid of their speed and defense field buffs. In total Claude can inflict a nasty minus 8 speed and defense on the enemy plus minus 5 attack and res too. You have to do some mental math when dealing with all these combat debuffs. Very solid unit and he also has defense smoke as well. Colorless isn't bad but it's a pretty toss up group depending on what you want. Some additional thoughts on this banner, it lasts for a long time so if you can wait we will see the new year's units at the very least and last year I think they grouped them with the update for Legendary Azura so the same might happen again. I know the three house leaders are very popular but if you only want them then I would advise waiting till they end up on a regular side banner. However if you don't mind the other units and their color group then it's not a terrible time if you just want a chance at getting them. Another reminder is that with Mjolnir's Strike probably sticking around, the value of mythic heroes have gone up and while you don't need plus 10 mythics unless you're gunning for the top, having one mythic hero per element can help you out if you don't have a super high scoring set of units already. It's not a necessity but they will make things easier. That's all I got for this banner, maybe if you pray to Santa Claude he will bless you with some lucky Christmas rolls. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.